got a question from our buddy here who's wondering why he has not been promoted to blue belt. So he says that he's been training for seven months and he's a fast learner. He has won tournaments, won golden tournaments. He says that he beats a lot of the blue belts in his gym. He says several of the higher belts have said, man, you should be a blue belt. And he's wondering that with all this considered, why is he only a one stripe white belt? He's wondering, you know, is there anything else other than skill and technique that should be, you know, sort of taken into account to be promoted? Is he just being impatient? Or is it just the gym that he's in? And he's wondering what my advice would be. So first off, brother, thanks for the question. And my advice to you would be, above, I'll give you some other stuff in a second, but my advice to you would be talk to your coach. Right, that's what they're there for. They're your guide in this stuff, right? So go up to your coach and say, hey man, I want to uphold the standard that you have for training. So tell me what it is that you expect of me to be a blue belt. And just let them know that you want to know what that is. And then whatever they tell you to do, just run with that, okay? Now for me personally, if you were one of my students, here's what I would tell you. First off, I was promoted way too quickly, okay? When I started Jiu Jitsu in 2003, I started training. And then from May 2003 and then February of 2006, I got my purple belt, right? See how fast that was? That's really fast. And my blue belt happened pretty quickly as well. The problem that I had at each one of those belts then was that I was promoted so quickly that I didn't have a time to really adjust, right? Every time you step up to the next belt level, it's like a new, it's a new, a lot of pressure on yourself, and it's also a new skill level that you have to rise to. And so for me, as a coach, I don't want my students to go through that same like violent process of having to like go to tournaments and just be, basically get beat down every tournament they go to just to sort of catch back up, right? So instead, once my students get pretty good, I leave them at that belt level just a little bit, not a long time, but a long, a long enough that they can kind of enjoy themselves. I, I call it giving them some time in the sun, right? Because they've, they've fought out of this big heap of people to stand out amongst their peers. And now I'm like, look, you've got to the top. Enjoy your time in the sun. Enjoy that for a little bit because then when you go to the next belt, you'll have new challenges ahead of you. Right, it, going into blue belt, you're, you are now going to move to blue belt and all those scrappy white belts, they're gonna look at you and you're gonna have a target on your back and they're gonna be coming after you. And then the purple belts, you're now a blue belt, so now they've gotta put the smash on you, right? Because again, they, they gotta, they have to keep their, their place in line, right, in the hierarchy. And so it's a new challenge. In tournaments, their blue belts are just tougher, right? There's, always, there's a lot of challenges that you're gonna run into as a blue belt. So enjoy your time as a white belt. You say you're winning tournaments, go win more tournaments, right? Like get to be at the end of your like white belt phase with just so many medals around your neck, if that's what you're into, right, go do that. But whatever it is, just enjoy that. Because again, the thing I tell people all the time is, if you focus on the belt, the problem's gonna be that it's a, it's a tangible thing, but it, there's nothing special there, right? Like it seems like such a cool goal to go after, but when you get to it, it's just empty. Right, like I mean, for, for me, when I got my black belt, I was expecting something, I don't know what I was expecting, I was expecting something though, to do, like when I got to my black belt, and then I got there, and it was like, eh, just training like normal, business as usual, nothing really happened, and nothing's gonna happen when you get your blue belt, right? You're gonna get there, you get promoted, it'll be a fun little day, you'll be excited about it, you'll take some pictures, post on Instagram, and then the next day, you will come back to the gym, and you will keep continue to train. That's it. So you wanna make sure that you're focused on the day-to-day -day stuff, the, the training with your friends, the techniques, all the cool stuff that you have direct control of day-to-day -day, rather than focusing on some belt. You don't, you don't really have control of this, your coaches. Folk, let, let that be a byproduct, right? Talk to them, see what they expect, but focus on all the day-to-day -day stuff. That's gonna be so much more valuable to you in the long run. And I'll share this because I think that a lot of people get the blue belt blues, as we call it, where they drop off of it as a blue belt because they, they see the blue belt it's such a big goal for a lot of people in the beginning that when they get there and they, they, they chase after it and then they, when they get there, they lose the steam because they put so much into that belt that once they got the belt, they putter out because they forgot to focus on all the cool stuff that's going on day to day, to fall in love with the training, to fall in love with just being in the gym, to fall in love with the grind, fall in love with all that stuff and let the belts just come. So that's my advice to you, brother. I hope it helps and uh, good luck with you with your training. Let the belt Go.